effectively teach your child to read at home, you want to have a solid understanding of the English language so that you're able to better clearly communicate to your child why a word is spelled the way it is or why a letter represents an unexpected sound in a word. You want to have that information so that you can then teach your child in a clearer way. Now, the English language is very complex. I will give you that. But there are things that we can learn about it that will help make teaching our children easier. And one of those things is called the four part processing model. So I'm going to share that with you today so that you are able to better understand how we as humans read and understand words. And then you can teach your child in a more effective way. In case you don't know me, my name is Erin. I'm from littleselflearning.com. I'm a former classroom teacher. I have my master's degree in early childhood education, and I spend my days teaching parents and other teachers how to teach their kids to read correctly based on the science of reading. I really want to make sure that all parents have this information and it's not just reserved for teachers or for educational researchers because we, the parents, are on the front line. We are with our children all day, every day. We are the ones supporting them at home. If they are struggling with reading, we are the ones trying to intervene, trying to get them help. So it's really important that we know this information so that we are better able to help and teach our kids. So let's dive into the four-part processing model. The four-part processing model comes from Dr. Louisa Motes and Dr. Tolman. Now, Dr. Motes and Dr. Tolman have simplified the way the brain learns to read and the way the brain reads words. So those of us parents and teachers who are working with kids can better explain it to them and we can understand how to teach them more effectively. So here's what it looks like. The four processes of this four-part processing model include phonological, so that's the sound, the way the word sounds. Orthographic, that's the spelling, the way the word is spelled. Meaning, of course, what the word means. And also context. What context is the word being used in? In English, we have a lot of shades of meaning of our words. And so it's really important that we know how the word is being used, in which context it's being used, because that will definitely change the meaning of the word. We also have a lot of homonyms and homophones. And so we wanna make sure that we know the context that the word is being used. So when you're teaching your child how to read, you're focusing on all four of these areas. You wanna focus on phonological, the sounds. We talk so much about phonological and phonemic awareness here on this channel. I will link down below the other videos I have. It's very important that your child is able to hear and manipulate the sounds in the spoken words. Then we match those sounds to the correct spellings. That's the orthographic. That's where phonics comes in, where we want them to know the sound and then we wanna teach them the different ways to spell that sound. Because in English, we don't have a one-to-one -one correspondence. We have 26 letters and 44 sounds. So that does not match up correctly. So for example, long vowel A can be spelled eight different ways. So it's one sound with eight different spellings because we can mix and match the letters to have different spellings. So the orthographic is really important because we want our children to be able to hear the sounds in the word and then match those sounds to spelling so they can start orthographically mapping the word in their brain so they can remember it. Now we also need the meaning of the word because meaning is really important to our brains. We can attach meaning to a word and then we're able to remember it so much better. I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you've learned a new word, but if you just learn how to say the word, pronounce the word and even spell the word, but you don't know what it means, you're gonna forget that word. You need the meaning to help you remember. And then of course, context, because like we know in English, there are words that mean different things. Same word can mean different things. And so we need to know the context in which the word is being used so that we know how the word is being used in the sentence. Now let's see the four part processing model in action. I'm going to be mapping a word and I'm going to be using this sound map to do it. This sound mat is totally free to download. If you're interested, I will leave the link down below. The download includes a page that has four sound words, but then you can also map words that have two sounds or three sounds. And these are really helpful for kids because they're able to pull apart the sounds in the word and match them to the letters. And you're giving them a little bit of extra support by letting them know how many sounds are in that word to begin with. So if you're interested in these, please check out the link below. But the word we're going to map today is the word skip. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to pound the word skip while we pound this hand. You ready? 
skip. Now we're going to tap out the sounds in the word skip. S -k -i -p. Skip. So what I've done is I have activated the phonological processor because I have pulled apart the sounds in the word and I am saying those sounds individually. S -k -i -p. Skip. So that's the phonological piece. Now I want to activate the orthographical piece and that is the spelling. How do we spell those sounds? So I know that s is spelled with an s, k is spelled with a k, i is spelled with an i, and p is spelled with a p. I know this is how I would spell the word skip. S, k, i, p, skip. So now I have connected that phonological piece, the sounds, with the orthographical piece, the writing, the letters, and now I have the word skip. So that's two of my processors in the four-part processing model. But I'm not done yet. I could just write this word skip and move on, but I'm not going to remember it unless I know the meaning and the context that goes with this word. So the meaning, well, skip can mean skipping, with my body, that's an action word. So maybe it means skip with uh, my body. Maybe it means skip, like I skip over something. So maybe I'm taking a test and I skip number two because I don't know the answer. So I'm passing over it. I'm not gonna do that one. Or maybe it's somebody's name. Do you know anybody named Skip? I know that was a really common nickname back in the day. So there might be someone named Skip. There are different meanings to this word. So I need to know what the meaning is and the context that it's being used in order for me to remember this word. So let's say I'm reading a story about a girl who is taking a test and the sentence is telling me that she wants to skip number two because it is too difficult for her. That is very different than skipping with your body or having a friend named Skip. So that's why the meaning and the context are so important. We need to know that piece as well in order for us to remember that word and understand how it was used in the sentence. So just with that one activity, I have activated all four of my processors. My phonological processor, when I pulled apart the sounds in the word. My orthographic processor, when I was matching those sounds to spellings, and that's why we have phonics connecting them. My meaning processor, what was the meaning of the word skip in that sentence? And the context, the context in which it was used. So I am going to remember that word so much better because I have activated all four of my processors than had I not. Now I will say, sometimes as a teacher, if I want kids to read words fast, let's say we're going through a blending drill and we are reading multiple words super fast. When they slow down and they say, what does that word mean? What does that word mean? What does that word mean? Sometimes I can feel impatient and feel like, just read the word. We gotta go to the next one, just read the word. But then I slow myself down and I remember, it's so much better for them to understand the meaning and the context of these words that they're reading. Otherwise, what's the point of reading? They can't read the words just to read the words. If they don't know what it means, we can't move on. We need to talk about it. And that is going to help them remember it so much better. So even me, I need this reminder as well because sometimes it can be easy to get caught up in just wanting to get through it. Make sure that they can actually pull the word off the page, that they can decode the word. But I also need the reminder that they need to understand the meaning and the context if they are going to remember that word in a much, much better way. I hope this information was helpful for you today. Again, if you would like a copy of these sound maps, we have four sounds and we have three sounds and two sounds and also right and left-handed maps. Please check out the link below so you can grab a copy for yourself. Work on mapping words with your child and as they're mapping, you're gonna know that you're activating all four processors and that you are helping them become a stronger reader. If you have any questions about this or anything else I share here, please comment down below or find me over on my website, littleslovelearning.com. You can also reach out to me on social media. I am active on Facebook and Instagram at littleslovelearningblog. I'd love to help you and support you on your journey of teaching your child how to read. Until the next video, have a great day. Bye.